welcome back to the channel everybody. I'm in a little bit of a different setup, or I should say location. I'm down on the uh, coast, lovely coast of South Carolina, and taking a couple days off, I guess you could say, although this year has been full of days off for the most part. Uh, but what I try to do when I come on trips like this, it's hard for me to just stay idle for so many days in a row. So in my head, I have to figure out a way to at least be somewhat productive. And so that's why I bring my camera with me. I mean, it's kind of obvious, but I've come to find that a location like this on the coast is the absolute best for capturing sky files. You've got nothing on the horizon except the ocean and the sky. And usually the weather is constantly changing. So, you know, over a couple of days uh, time, you can capture a complete library full of sky files. Or you can come out here uh, at sunrise you catch stuff on the backside at sunset, and then you got everything in between. So that's kind of where I have to kiss out my head to be a little bit productive while I'm supposedly taking some time off. As far as settings are concerned, I'm using the uh, 24 to uh, 70 2.8 lens. The lens really doesn't make all that much uh, difference here, just because the files that you're capturing, depending on the use that you're going to use them for. Uh, my personal experience, uh, the sky files that I grab, I can, I'm usually putting a slight blur over the file, so it doesn't have to be uh, you know, a, a large uh, megapixel file. And even a point and shoot, you know, sky files from point and shoot, maybe even the phone these days could work um, for swap swapping out skies to put on the file size and uh, composites, original composites. But as far as camera settings are concerned, like I said, I've got the 2470. Uh, when I'm shooting these, I like to rack it all the way out to 24, go as wide as possible. That way, when I get the file back in and post, I have as much room as possible to move it around and set my composition. Uh, F-stop, I normally keep it uh, around 5.6, somewhere in that area where it's, uh, I'm not worried about having things in focus, but at the same time, I'm not so stopped down that I'm worrying about shutter speed. Uh, shutter speed, so right here I'm at five six and one one thousandth of a uh, second. Um, also something else I'm new I'm doing this time out is it's using the Luminar software which I made a video about earlier and I will link right up here in this area. Uh, it uses JPEG files so I'm shooting uh, raw plus JPEG fine, JPEG fine files uh, so I will be able to easily import these guys into that software if I need to do a sky swap. Then at the same time, I've got the raw files in case I'm using these images for a uh, composite that I'm building from scratch and need the most resolution uh, possible. Any other notes? Where basically, when I'm, I mean, if you can look out here, I'm, I'm, we'll grab focus kind of midway there and then bring my camera up. I'll grab focus and then bring it up like that. And I'm pan around. and that type of thing. It's just uh, super easy. The best thing about coming down and creating or capturing uh, sky, your own sky files is that they're completely 100% unique and no one else is going to have them unless you, you share them. And over a period of just a couple of days you can fill up folders of different types of skies. We had rain here earlier today so I had some good cloudy skies. I'll drop some of the uh, images on this video so we can kind of see I'll show you what I was able to capture over the course of a couple days all right back in the studio unfortunately and I just wanted to do a quick rundown to recap and add some things I didn't touch on from the video shoot wide to a point because you don't want to have to deal with any lens distortion when compositing so I found 24 millimeters works pretty well for me also, make sure to rotate when you're shooting and catch different angles in relation to the sun. You can always flip the images in post, but it never hurts to have as many different angles to choose from when you have an interesting sky, and it literally, literally takes a few extra seconds. I also use a polarizer because I feel it just gives me that extra dimension and clean color to the files. Times I remove it or rotate away from polarization would be when I have a lot of clear blue sky and I don't want the corner or edge darkness 
and then in lower light when it's going to slow my shutter speed below a comfortable level. Overall, I just thought I'd share this video as almost a reminder of how easy it is to be productive and creative while you're on a vacation of sorts. You never know when inspiration will strike and it's best to be prepared. Okay, that pretty much does it for me on this video. If you enjoyed it, please hit that thumbs up down below. If you aren't subscribed and would like to learn more about things like this, hit that subscribe button as well. And don't forget to click the bell for notifications. Also, if you've made it this far, let me know in the comments if you would like to see more out of studio type content like what I did here. I promise to work on the production quality, but I've got a few more opportunities coming up where I could attempt to create some kind of vlog style content, all the way sharing details of my thought process and photography in general. Thanks again, everyone. Please stay safe and healthy out there. And I probably won't be here in the next one, but I will, I'll be here in the next one.